it is my absolute pleasure to be joined by, in my opinion, the greatest athlete Ireland has ever produced. <laughs> um, you're undoubtedly a legend, Katie. Thank you're you. undeniably great. And it's your big homecoming. Yeah. Tell me what it's like to be home. Oh, it's amazing. I nearly pinched myself that this is actually happening. Um, a few years ago, I didn't actually think it, it was going to happen. Um, but ever since I turned pro, it was always my dream to actually fight at home. Um, it's one of the few uh, dreams I, I actually had as a pro. I obviously wanted to become an undisputed champion. I wanted to, r to raise a game for, for, for female boxers, but ultimately I did want to box at home. And uh, I have this chance now on Saturday evening. And I just can't wait to get, get, to get going. Well, you've absolutely done all the things that you've set out to do so far. But, but i got to ask, I interview some fighters ahead of homecoming fights sometimes, and they say it's a bit of a double-edged sword because, yes, I'm at home, I have all these home comforts, but a lot of people come out of the woodwork too, you know, like, do you remember when we shared <laughs> yeah. that bag of Tato and senior yeah. infants? Yeah. Can I get a few tickets? Are you getting any of that? Oh, yeah, you definitely get, get a lot of that. <laughs> I actually turn my phone off uh, or else I just pass everyone on to Brian Peters, my manager. <laughs> <laughs> poor Brian. So, yeah, poor Brian. He was getting the, uh, a lot of a lot of addicted calls and texts from people, but... Um, yeah, you definitely do get get a lot of that, but uh, unfortunately, it's in the three arena. It's great that it's, it's here in the three arena, but we obviously wanted a bigger venue, uh, so there is a lot of people who are going to be disappointed uh, not not being able to get a ticket. But obviously, those things are out of my control. I'm just delighted to be boxing at home, and I can't wait to just step out in front of the Irish crowd. Um, I I am so proud to be an Irish woman and uh, to represent my country every single time I step into the ring and now I have a chance to to bring big big time boxing back to this na nation um, and it's a nation who absolutely loves their sport who love their their fighting um, and uh, I think we we produced some of the best boxers in the world over the last few years so it's it's amazing to, to be back home. Well, you're proud to be Irish and Irish people are very proud yeah. that you are Irish also. Yeah. Um, I was telling you just before we started here that. The first time I covered you was before your third pro fight, and Brian Peters invited the media out mm. to this small gym in Ratot. No <laughs> frills. This yeah. place, you know, very yeah. much a, a working class yeah. boxing gym. From there, we went to the county club. We had a beautiful carvery dinner. Thank you, Brian, for that. Yeah. And afterwards, you, Ross Enemy, and Brian sat down and told us you wanted to be the Ronda Rousey for pro boxing, for female pro boxing. The next time I covered you was in April of yeah, last year. Yeah. And I think it's your coronation moment as the queen of boxing that night. Mm. To see you, you know, you being the center mm. of the mm. boxing world, every Irish person tuning in yeah. from back home, and then to have this performance of a lifetime. Mm. You know, we were talking to the caretakers in MSG afterwards, yeah. and they said there's three best ever fights, mm. in the argument for best ever fights that happened in Madison Square Garden, and that was one of yes. them. Is, like, for me, watching you, as I say, it's this coronation moment. Do you realize in that moment, like, this is happening. Everything I've set out for is happening right now in front of me. Can you can you think about that in the moment? Um, I think those things are probably something that I would think about when I hang up the gloves, maybe, but it's that when you're in the moment, you're always thinking about the next fight or thinking about, about, about the actual performance about what I could have done better. Um, but I obviously knew that it was such a special night. Yeah, even walking into the, to, uh, with the ring walk, I, uh, 6,000 Irish people travelled over to, to, to that fight. It's uh, absolutely incredible. Um, the support was just absolutely insane that night uh, between the Irish and the Puerto Ricans. Uh, the oh whole yeah. state was, was electric. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and obviously to produce a fight like that as well, it was a you know, fight of the decade sort of, uh, yes. sort of fight. Um, where two two champions are going head to head, and it just end up end up being this epic fight. Um, so yeah, the whole night was very very special, and so delighted to to, to have taken part in such an historic event for for women's boxing, and to go home still undefeated, still undisputed. Um, it was definitely the best night of my career so far. Do you realize you're in a classic fight when you're in a classic fight? Like if you, yeah. if you have to go back and watch it, say, like, actually, you know what? Yeah. They are right yeah. about this. Well, this is quite good. Yeah. Or do you know in the moment? You, I don't think you know in the moment. Even the um, the crowd, you don't even realize uh, how loud the crowd is. Really, you're just listening to, their, to your coach. It's amazing when you're in the arena full of twenty thousand people screaming. Uh, you're all, you're only focused on one voice, which is your corner. And um, it's it's funny how that is in a, in a huge event like that. Uh, you're always in tune with, with your corner's voice, and um, even in the, in the middle of all the chaos that night, I was always just listening to Ross, just trying to focus on what I, what I should be doing in the next round. And um, obviously, then when my name was uh, uh, was announced as a winner, the whole crowd again went uh, went electric. It was just 
Yeah, just a special night. It was a great pleasure yeah. of mine to be there. One of the best memories I've had covering mm. any sport. And I always wonder, well, in that moment, I'm like, Katie had to convince Eddie Hearn to be her promoter. Yeah. How did this work out? Like, you're giving this guy the biggest days he's ever had, yeah. and you had to convince him. I mean, uh, yeah. isn't that crazy? You yeah. had to have a meeting with him and, like, I am going to be a big deal. But yeah. or not, a lot of people already knew, but you had to do that, right? You had to yeah. kind of convince him. I mean, I do remember the first time I, I spoke to Eddie in his office um, six years ago and um, tell him I wanted to be the Ronda Rousey of boxing and we, we, did, we didn't really know how this journey was going to go to be honest we didn't know how people were going to perceive women's boxing but here we are a few years later and women's boxing the rise of women's boxing has been absolutely incredible over the last few years and you're seeing uh, women's fights on every single boxing card right now and uh, and amazing fights as well and uh, some of the household na names right now are actually female fighters which is absolutely incredible did, did, Was a hard graft like I mean you you were pivotal in that whole situation mm -hmm. I mean it, just to mention the Madison Square Garden the first time women had ever headlined excuse me mm -hmm. the first time women had ever headlined an event there like di did that feel like hard miles when, when you were going to these people mm -hmm. and trying to convince them to to take this seriously and and telling them this would be a huge deal yeah I, I, I just remember the first time I even lays on a pair of boxing clubs as a, as a 10 year old um, and all the years, the years of sacrifice, the years, years of of of, of hard graft and and winning medals um, uh, behind the scenes, and um, just consi consistently showing up to the gym every single day. And then uh, now I have this chance to make history in Madison Square Garden. And um, you're look, you're even in the hallways of Madison Square Garden. You're looking at Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier, Sugar Ray Robinson, all these legends who who fought there. And it's amazing that they think that myself and Amanda Saran are, are actually in that category as well. Um, amazing. But I also have to say that I don't think we would be in this position without the the past fighters, the likes of Deirdre Gogarty, who's actually going to be there on Saturday wow. night. It's amazing that she's actually going to be present um, on Saturday evening. It's such a pleasure for me to have uh, someone who I looked up to um, as a kid. She was the only female fighter I knew at the time. And... Uh, she was always so encouraging to me growing up. Um, made time for me every single time she was home. Held a pass for me, for me a couple of times. Always uh, such a huge encourager. And um, her fight with Christy Martin was also history making. It's on the um, Tyson undercard, right? Uh, the Tyson undercard on HBO. Yeah. And uh, they were walking to the ring that day, and he actually got booed walking to the ring. But as he left the ring, every single person was on their feet applauding. They got a stand and ovation, and that that's what you call pressure. Uh, in a situation like that where people are actually booing the female fighters stepping into the ring but they, they actually got fired the night that night and um, you know, things like that, that 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 to me is just outstanding and um, I don't think those fighters get enough credit for what they actually did for the sport and I'm just absolutely delighted that she's going to be there on Saturday evening cheering me on um, yeah she's one of my heroes and it's amazing she's going to be she's actually going to be present watching me fighting that's amazing yeah. um, you speak about as a, as a young girl and you start training boxing. I was in Crumlin Boxing Gym, it must have been two mm. years ago, and Brad Brady was there, and I was telling him, I'm here to cover a different thing or whatever, he goes, I just need to show you this picture. Yeah. I was like, okay, he brings me over to a corner, and it's a picture of him putting headgear on you, on you, yeah. and, he, and he's telling me, like, we used to not tell anyone yeah. that this was a girl, and, and send her in, and yeah. he goes, you know, she was poetry in motion even back then, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Now, as you said, you know, and people have paved the way for you, as, as you've mm. mentioned there, but you've paved the way for so many yeah. young girls who are boxing now. Like, do, do you, like, obviously you're giving up praise to the people who came before you, but do you acknowledge that, like, you have opened a door that was previously closed for, yeah. for Irish women? No, I definitely am very, very proud of that. It's definitely not the, the proudest part about this whole journey for me is uh, is paving the way for the, the next generation. And um, when I was boxing, there was obviously no female fighters in the boxing gyms, but right now, Female boxing in the country is absolutely on a high. Uh, we have such a strong team. Uh, we have uh, so many medal hopes um, it, it going into the, the next Olympic Games. It's absolutely outstanding. And uh, I'm definitely the, the proudest person in the world watching that as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I just think that's that's amazing. Yeah. Do, do we have the clip that we can play here? Of the oh yes, well, I oh, wanted to show you this. Oh, Look, no. I got way too excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> you, these are going to embarrass me. <laughs> is this the Hungarian one? Because this is the crack. Look at the right peg here. The Whole right body <laughs> around it. Lob the keeper. Yeah. Hit the bar. It's like Tony Oboa back yes. in the day. Remember that? <laughs> wow. Like, uh, like, there was another goal going viral as well, the Italy goal. Yes. We we had to debate which is the best goal here. <laughs> you told us before you like this one because you've won this we game, right? We actually won this game, and uh, 
and all of a sudden in the, in the Italy game, I, I actually got sent off five minutes after, so I became a, a hero and a villain in five minutes. <laughs> Glad so that, that clip isn't going viral. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I've got bad memories from that Italy game. <laughs> this one, though, I mean, yeah. do you remember being there? Like, what are your memories of being with the, the Irish football team? Oh, amazing memories. It was obviously such a huge part of my life growing up as well. Um, yeah, I, I loved it. And some all, all my best friends have actually come from from the football days. Um, P Mount, uh, P Mount, the Irish, the Irish team. Uh, so they've um, still great friends with all with all those girls. And it's, it's amazing to see the the Irish girls going to the World Cup this this summer as well. A, a, a history making team. Um, but I was saying beforehand, I think that they're the only two goals they ever scored <laughs> for the for the Irish team. Don't I, say that. They don't it know wasn't that. a huge goal scorer. <laughs> so, <laughs> were you centre mid? Um, striker, centre mid. Yeah, but I never really scored many many goals to be honest. <laughs> Look, you know, I'm sure you were fantastic <laughs> anyway. Kate, but what do you think of this uh, Irish football team? I Amazing. think it can give us a similar moment to the yeah. moments that you've given us. You've given us yeah, so many, absolutely. but it feels like there's there's a growing kind of wave heading towards yeah. us there with the Irish women's football team. Yeah, absolutely. I think we have some of the best players in the world in that team, the likes of Katie McKay, who, who we were actually talking about beforehand, yes. an amazing player, um, just a, an amazing team, a solid team, and a, a very experienced team as well. Um, yeah, I think they have the potential that to do very well in this World Cup, and um, I'm very, very excited to see how, how they get on. What, what yeah. Was it a tough choice for you? Like, when you reach elite levels and anything, you have to give, you, you know, you, you have to make sacrifices. Mm. You obviously were already at an elite level in football and you go on to be the greatest boxer of all time. But <laughs> w w which, like, did, did, did it, can you remember the crossroads moment where you're like, I have to pick one of these? Yeah. And why did football go by the wayside? Yeah, you know, it wasn't actually um, a tough decision for me in the end, to be honest. Um, boxing was always my number one passion growing up and... Um, I just love the in the individual aspect um, of uh, uh, of boxing. You're you're in there on your own. You're not relying on other players around you to to show up and, and put the work in. Um, and I just think you learn so much about yourself when in the boxing ring that you don't learn in, in any other sport. Just the discipline of it, the the how well do you take can you have you got a good chin. Um, you know how uh, how deep can you dig uh, in, in a fight? You have to be able to fight through the trenches. I just I absolutely love the one to one aspect as well. And um, in the end, it really wasn't a, a, t a tough decision for me. I, I knew that, that this was my number one sport. And I also had a dream of going to the Olympic Games as well and, and bringing back that, that Olympic gold medal. And um, so my whole focus was really always around that. I can remember, actually, funnily enough, a friend of mine worked for Joe uh, in 2012. And he went with a camera crew to Bray. Mm. And the scenes I saw there, it was like Glastonbury. They, yeah. had, they, had, <laughs> oh, yeah. they had a screen out in the I town. Hall. And, and it's funny yeah. now when I'm speaking to you, I'm like, you know what? Katie would have hated to be at her own kind of oh, party. Oh, my you gosh. Know? Like, yeah. just so many it's, people yeah. there. It was, it was <laughs> yeah. quite a scene. Like, yeah. Can you remember seeing them back when you were in yeah. the Olympics and going? I, I definitely wish I had enjoyed it a, a bit more, to be, yeah, honest, yeah. to be quite honest. Um, you know, after the Olympics, you're automatically you're thinking about the next four years and yes. I, I should have really uh, took it in a bit more and and enjoyed and, and just enjoyed those moments a bit more but um yeah it was a very very special homecoming obviously um I don't know how many people were there like thousands upon thousands of people and the whole country was out uh, pretty much to, to welcome me home it was just yeah just a special moment for me and, uh, and for my family of course as well I know you didn't enjoy it, but I can tell you, we, we enjoyed <laughs> yeah. it plenty. Don't worry, all of the enjoyment was maximized yeah. by us. Um, yeah. You mentioned Crow Park at the start, and there is no athlete, uh, team, or anything Ireland has ever produced that deserves that Crow, mm. Crow Park date more than you. I think everybody wanted this to happen. Mm. And I know you have a very serious fight on Saturday, and mm. by no means am I asking you to look past that mm. fight, but Crow Park, like, if anyone can do it, Katie, I really yeah. believe it's you. Yeah. And, and do you believe that this will happen before you, you hang up the gloves? Oh, well, I hope so. I mean, I'm definitely not giving up uh, uh, the hope of actually fighting there one day. Our most iconic arena in the country, 80,000 people. That is, uh, that really is the stuff of dreams, isn't it? To, to have a chance of fighting such an, a huge stadium and um, so much history uh, there for, for the Irish as well. It will be an amazing night, but those things are obviously out of my control. I, I can't do anything about that. Um, I, I I obviously, like you said, have to focus on, on what's what's ahead of me on Saturday night. But um, I would absolutely love the chance to to, to, to fight in Crow Park. That's for sure. Well, we'd all love it for you too. Mm. Um, is it crazy? Like I just mentioned there, like before you hang them up, 
but I'm like looking at the most successful athlete Ireland's ever produced that I'm talking about retirement and stuff like that. You're kind of like, mate, relax. <laughs> like I mean, I, I've done a lot I of things. I'm still looking pretty good in there. Have you been watching these fights? I, I think everyone um, talks about retirement at this, at this age, don't they? I mean, I think every single interviewer asked me about retirement over the last couple of years. But I apologize. Uh, no, <laughs> no, yeah, so thanks for that. <laughs> You're added to the list. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but it's, uh, it's obviously natural. But, you know, I, I do feel very very good I take one fight at a time one year at a time and uh, we'll see how it goes but I'm certainly not thinking about hanging up the gloves any, any, uh, anytime soon well, I'm glad to hear that yeah. is it a scary thought though like be, because you've been this dedicated athlete since you're a kid basically and this is your life like obviously you don't get to this level mm -hmm. in the sport without this taking a massive part of your life is it a scary thought to think about life uh, without kind of the day to day yeah I wouldn't say it's a scary thought to be honest and I, I'd always keep myself fit in the gym every single day but um, yeah, I'll have to start looking for a job as well. I'd, I think I'd, <laughs> I'd uh, lose my mind if I, if I was just sitting around it doing nothing. So if you if you can find me a job, I'd appreciate that. I will. I'll look into it. <laughs> I'll ask. Yeah, I'll ask around. Um, we we went out into the streets and we spoke to people in Dublin today, and you know they unanimously, as I agree, that you are the greatest athlete Ireland has ever produced. And and this is a is not a new conversation, as you know. I, is it hard? to be a role model, to be someone that's put on a pedestal pretty much their whole life, right? Like, this is at least a decade, you know, that you've you've been in those conversations. Is that tough to shoulder? Um, I don't think about it too much, to, to be quite honest. I think that they're, they're all lovely words, and uh, it's always nice to hear nice things about yourself. <laughs> but um, I don't think too much about that, to be honest. I don't see myself as, like everybody else, uh, you, you know, sees me or, or whatever. I'm just uh, another athlete, just like anybody else. I'm... I'm stepping the ring on Saturday night, just like anybody else, uh, as a challenger this time, and um, I'm obviously trying to get to take her belts, and so I think that that takes a, a bit of the pressure off, and I don't see myself uh, as some icon or, or whatever. I just see myself as a as an, another athlete, and um, but I do love the fact that I, I, that I can have an influence on people as well, and especially some of the young girls coming up. Um, I think that's that's really really lovely and, and beautiful, and I, I love uh, the fact I can. Um, make a way for the next generation of female fighters. Um, I don't want them to go through the same the same struggles I went through as a young kid. Um, they have so many uh, more oppor opportunities now, and I absolutely love that. That's amazing. Um, uh, we were speaking beforehand. We have a mutual a friend in Ariel yeah. Hawani. He is enamored by you. I mean, <laughs> the guy can't stop speaking about you. He, he, you are his favorite. I know they're meant to be journalists. Are meant to stay on the fence yeah. and be impart. <laughs> he is not impartial at all when it comes to Katie Taylor. But one thing he, you know, talking to him on the phone, he, he is upset by the lack of coverage that is on the fact that you are taking this massive test here. He said, like, Kate, Katie's at home. And I agree with him in, in insofar as he's saying she could have fought a broomstick and people would have paid to see it. And, and <laughs> yeah. he's dead right. There's no there's no disputing that. But you're taking on a fellow undefeated, undisputed champion mm -hmm. and going up in weight to take mm -hmm. on, uh, to try and take mm -hmm. her titles. Mm -hmm. I mean... I just love the competitive spirit that you come into all mm -hmm. these things. That w was that where you were? As soon as Amanda Serrano was kind of out of the equation, you're like, yeah. well, I need a challenge. Like, I'm not yeah. going in there and just fighting anybody. Yeah, absolutely. The minute uh, Amanda Serrano was out, we, we, we looked at who, who the next uh, best challenge is, and we all um, we all knew it was, it was going to be Chantel Cameron. Um, you know, she is uh, um, obviously an unbeaten fighter, undisputed champion. We're having two undisputed champions going head-to-head. -head. This never happens in boxing. And um, this is a huge test, and I think everyone knows at this stage I, I want the big tests, I want the big fights. I think I would be so unmotivated for, say, a mandatory challenger. I want to have these big, big challenges, and I want to challenge myself against the very, very best. What's the point in, in, in choosing, uh, picking and choosing your fights? I want to challenge myself against the very, very best, and I think that's uh, so, that's uh, that's always marked my career. Uh, so I, I do want the big tests and the challenges, and. Um, I have a, a huge test on Saturday night, and people are saying that this is going to be an even better fight than the, than the Amanda Serrano fight. It's a uh, it's a an amazing fight to to bring to bring home to, to to the Irish fans. I think we're not just bringing big time boxing back; we're we're bringing it back with one of the best fights in boxing right now. Absolutely. And what do you think? You know, you you've you've uh, 
You've mentioned on talent competition a couple of times, right? Like as an amateur. Um, I fought her, I think, once before. Really, yeah? Years and years amateur. ago. Yeah, as an amateur, yeah. 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 I, I won that one. <laughs> I just had to get that that does not surprise <laughs> me. But, but what do you remember as a competitor? Like, as you were watching her now as a pro, like, what, what do you have to be ready for here? Maybe that's different than uh, preparing for Amanda Serrano. Um, she's obviously a lot bigger than, than, than Serrano. She's obviously a righty instead of a southpaw. Um, she's big, she's strong, she's, uh, she has a big engine, um, um, and she's very, very good. <laughs> um, you don't become undisputed champion if you're not good at the end of the day, so, uh, but I am ready. I, I'm, uh, I, I just can't wait for this test. I've been training, um, obviously hard over the last few months for this challenge, and I feel like I am ready for whatever comes my way. You have given us so many amazing sporting memories. What's your favorite Irish sport memories? Like, is there a moment from your childhood where you're like, oh my God? Yeah. Like, do, do you, is there anything that sticks out to you when you think of yeah. great Irish sporting memories? Um, I obviously remember looking back at the, I was only four years of age when Italian 90 happened. I still remember that too. Yeah, I'm the same I just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I just, uh, looking back on the clips, even at the, the excitement of the whole nation during that time was absolutely incredible. Um, Michael Carruth was always a, a, yes. a huge one for me. I was six years of age watching him getting, getting his Olympic gold medal. As he was stepping up to the podium, I was stepping up onto a chair, pretend, envision really? me getting uh, an Olympic gold medal. Uh, always my dream to 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 do uh, to, to do the same thing. Um, I think uh, Asanya Sullivan for me as well yeah. was, was always so consistently so great coming back from the Olympics and World Championships w with medals, and she should really have two Olympic gold medals. That the people who who beat her were all. Uh, um, they all popped, they they all popped yeah, they all, the, the all failed drugs, uh, drug tests. I didn't tests, even so realize that. That's it's incredible, crazy. though. She should really be a two time Olympic gold medalist. Um, I think Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo was also a huge event, wasn't it? I was there for that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, how many seconds was that? 13. Uh, incredible. The PR guy, right? Wait, yeah. hear this. The PR guy yeah. from the UFC had to put out an Instagram video, right? Yeah. So he gets <laughs> up when the bell starts. He and he has them, it's about to start. He turned around. And the fight and is I'm over. Like, he's like, what? I was like, it's over. The fight's over, That's man. That's terrible for him. <laughs> <laughs> he lost his job. Yeah, he never yeah, worked yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, well, speaking of MMA, Ariel, of course, is in town. And I have all this pressure on me, right? Because when I go to New York, he has all these big, famous New York institution things to do with me. And I'm like, I don't know. What, what do I do <laughs> with, with America? Like, let's do lots of Irish stuff. I'm asking you, what do, what should I do with him? I don't know oh what to do gosh. with him. Uh, well, a few of my American friends uh, have been uh, to Ireland a few times now, and they, al uh, they always love Johnny Fox's pub. Is that one to go? <laughs> That's the one to go to. <laughs> they love the traditional Irish drink, music. He doesn't drink, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can have an orange juice. Yeah, yeah. It's about the music, <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, don't, worry yeah, about exactly. the, don't worry about the porter. <laughs> I wanted to ask you as well about Roy Keane, the phone call he gave you yeah. after 2016. Is he one of your idols, like your sporting idols? Absolutely, models? yeah. He's um, absolutely uh, one of my uh, sporting heroes growing up just love his mentality um, his no nonsense attitude um, just never settle for second best um, just an amazing competitor and a great leader um, but yeah after my loss in Rio um, I got a phone call and I, it was a private number I never, I never usually answer private numbers but for, for whatever reason I just answered that one and it was right keen at the end of the phone um, just, uh, I just thought that was amazing uh, during my lowest moment my lowest moment in life my, my lowest point and uh, my hero uh, gives me a ring to, to encourage me and to uh, just to give me an encouraging word and I just thought that was absolutely incredible and I'll never ever forget that you're quite similar because he had to fight through a lot like he, he yeah. mentioned in his book that you know being from Cork it was hard to get in any of these yeah. FAI select panels mm -hmm. he stood up for what yeah. he believed in as you did and here's another one Nobody expected him to make a fantastic mm. TV pundit. I'm asking yeah, you, okay, <laughs> maybe that's the job. Could you oh, see yourself gosh. getting into it? I don't think so. I'm not definitely not as controversial as Roy is. So <laughs> 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 he doesn't care, does he not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. I mean, I was just suggested. I thought yeah. it could have been a great idea. Um, what about Jake Paul? All right, th this is the, the like, well, I was at the New York fight, and yeah. it's the two, the, a duo, the most unlikely duo I ever saw, kind of, but it worked out. It all yeah, worked yeah. out really well. What do you make of this guy? Is he good for boxing? Is he bad for boxing? Are you still undecided? Um, I think he obviously gets new eyes on the sport, and he obviously has a huge fan base, um, millions upon millions of uh, followers on, you know, on social media or whatever, so I guess it's not a bad thing, but... Um, 
I don't think he, he can box very well, though. Um, uh, I don't. I think uh, you know. Here, I'm not saying anything. Wait, call me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think he definitely is improving, though. I think uh, from his last his last couple of fights, I think he is definitely uh, improving, and um, and you have to hand it to him. I guess he is uh, willing to step in there and and take the punches and. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think that these YouTubers are making more money than than the rest of the fires. <laughs> but um, it's happened so often. I can't happened, believe like yeah. uh, KSI these guys. Yeah, I'm like, what? I know. Salt I, Bay. I'm I, like, who is? I don't understand it myself, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, that, that's uh, that's the world we're living in right now. I, I suppose. We talked about uh, your favorite sporting moments. How does it feel to ma- to know that you make Irish people feel that way when you fight? Do, do you like yeah. that they well up a pride that there's kids standing on chairs all over <laughs> Ireland when they're putting the belt around your yeah. waist? It must be pretty surreal. Yeah, it is uh, pretty surreal. I um, I love that. I love I love um, just representing my country. I love this nation, and uh, for a very small nation, we're all <laughs> we are great fighters, and we're uh, um, we go above ourselves in, in the world of sport. I think uh, we've always produced great uh, great athletes and. I'm just so proud. I think it, the fact that I'm spending most of my time in America now, all the Americans want to be Irish. <laughs> it's it's amazing. They always have uh, Irish ancestors, and I'm thinking, well, I actually am Irish. So <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, it's amazing. The yeah, the every every single time to step into into the ring to represent my nation, it's it's always a proud moment for me. So let's say this weekend is another fantastic Katie mm-hmm. Taylor memorable Irish sporting moment, and then hopefully. We move on to Crow Park. Is yes. that the dream plan? Is that is that the ideal blueprint for how yeah, this goes? That would be uh, obviously uh, the ideal bru- blueprint for sure. Um, but we'll take one step at a time, one fight at a time. And I'm just looking at a Saturday night and I, I'm expecting to produce a great performance and in front of uh, 10,000 Irish people. This is very, very special. It is, mm. Kate. And this is very, very special <laughs> for me. So thank you so yeah, much for you. joining us. <laughs> Thanks all. Thank Cheers. You.